Praise God. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. My name is Pastor Al Kennan. It's my pleasure. It's my honor. It's my privilege to be here with you this morning to facilitate this prayer conference call to be able to walk with you and to serve you and to be able to pray with you and for you as we go before the throne of God asking God, petitioning God, requesting God, begging God, pleading God to move on our behalves, to move in our lives, to move in such a way that we experience the fullness of his grace, the fullness of his mercy, the fullness of his love, the fullness of everything that God has in store for us. Good morning, Sister Nancy. We see you. Good morning. We praise God for your presence here with us on this call. We believe that prayer changes things, that there is nothing that when we put prayer on it, that can remain the same. There is no relationship that can remain the same. There is no uh, employment situation that can remain the same. There is no family situation that can remain the same. There's no illness that can remain uh, dominant in our lives. There is nothing that remains the same once we put prayer on it because it's through prayer that we activate our faith. It is through prayer that we connect with a higher power. That it is through prayer that we open up the doors of our lives and we uh, allow God to come in and to have his way. And I believe the word that the word said, God rewards those who diligently seek him and we seek him through our prayers. So this morning, as we come together as prayer warriors, as believers, as members of the body of Christ, as persons who know beyond a shadow of a doubt that our God is able to do exactly what he said he's, he's going to do, that our God is going to do it, that we can count it done, that as Mark 11 verse 24 says having prayed for what we prayed for believe that it has already come to pass and it shall come to pass amen amen this is what we're going to do amen we are going to have our opening word of prayer in one minute then we're going to move right into our uh, morning devotional we've got a great devotional this morning i believe god is going to bless us through our devotional and then we're going to dedicate the rest of the time of our call this morning to the prayer section of our call where we get to hear from you about what it is that you would like for us to pray with you and for you about that we will uh, uh, receive your prayer requests, your praise reports, your prayers, your words of encouragement, your witnesses, and your testimonies, and we will see what thus says the Lord this morning. So with that said, let us go ahead and begin with our opening word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now, God, thanking you for this day, for this is a day that you have made, God. We are glad, we are rejoicing in it. God, you have given us this awesome ministry. You have given us this unique form of communication where, God, we can enter into our prayer closets and, God, we can talk to you and we can share with you what we're dealing with and what we're going through. We can literally uh, uh, inform you and lay at your feet that which troubles us, that which stresses us, that, God, which causes us to pull our hair out, that, God, which worries us and hurts us and harms us, that, God, which we're up against that God which we're challenged with, that God which we are uh, faced with, that God which we must encounter, that we, God, can leave, literally leave right here on your altar any and everything that is affecting us in the way that it is, knowing and believing that God, you will take it, you will reshape it, you will reform it, God, you will reconstitute it into not something that's going to hurt us, but something that is a footstool, something that is a step, something that is a 
form of elevation that brings us to the next level, brings us to the next season, brings us to the next purpose, brings us to the next assignment where we're able to use the fact that you brought us through it to get us past whatever this new thing is going to be. God, we thank you right now for this time of prayer. We thank you right now for what you're going to do. We thank you right now for how you're going to do it. We thank you right now for how you're going to bless us. We thank you right now for how you're going to confirm some things to us. We thank you right now how you're going to clarify some things to us. We thank you right now how you're going to commission some of us. We thank you right now how you are going to simply bless us in this time of prayer. Now, God, we pray that you would grant us all the empathy and the sympathy necessary to be able to lift up our prayer requests and our prayer concerns and our praise reports and our words of words of encouragement and our witnesses and our testimonies uh, this morning as we come together for prayer. With that said, God, we love you. We honor you. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. If you have your Bibles or you have an electronic device with a Bible app on it, would you please turn with us to 1 Samuel chapter 8? Amen. Please turn with us to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. Amen. Uh, we experienced a little technical difficulty here. Um Amen. What? All right. Uh, Jesus. Okay. If you have your, um, amen. If you have your uh, uh, Bibles, uh, you electronic devices, please turn with us to 1 Samuel chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 19 through 22. Verses 19 through 22. Amen. I will read from the New Living Translation of the Word. All right. The Word of God, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 19 through 22. It reads as follows But the people refused to listen to Samuel's warning. Even so, we still want a king, they said. We want to be like the nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. So Samuel repeated to the Lord what the people had said, and the Lord replied, Do as they say. Give them a king. Then Samuel agreed and sent the people home. Amen. Thus far the word of God. But the people refused to listen to Samuel's warning. Even so, we still want a king, they said. We want to be like the nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. So Samuel repeated to the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord replied, do as they said, say, and give them a king. Then Samuel, Samuel agreed and sent the people home. The title for our devotional this morning is Divine Comedy Part 4. Divine Comedy Part 4. The Israelites have come before the prophet Samuel with a request. Give us a king. Having spent the past several hundred years living in the promised land, Israel has observed its neighbors. All of the surrounding neighbors had kings that ruled these nations. They had flesh and blood human beings that could be touched with their hands, beheld with their eyes, heard with their ears, and smelled with their noses. These kings represented these nations before other nations. When they spoke, they spoke for an entire people. When they acted, they acted with the force of an entire nation. When they decreed, their decisions were law. When Israel compared their political structure to that of its neighbors, Israel immediately noticed that it lacked what, it na- what its neighbors had. The people of God didn't have a flesh and blood person sitting on a throne. They couldn't see their king like their neighbors could see their kings. They couldn't touch him like their neighbors could touch their kings. They couldn't behold their king like the neighbors beheld their kings they couldn't smell the scented perfumes that their king wore like the neighbors could smell the scented perfumes that their kings wore 
Yes, they could hear their king bellow through the rumbling, rolling thunder, but they were unable to discern what he said as their neighbors were able to completely understand when their kings issued commands. Unfortunately, Israel believed that it lacked something that its neighbors possess. They couldn't see that what they had in the Lord, they couldn't see what they had in the Lord God Almighty. And when we say Israel couldn't see, we mean that Israel didn't or couldn't understand who and what Yahweh was to them. He wasn't just any deity. No, he was the Lord God Almighty. He was the creator of every living thing. He was the author and finisher of all existence. He was the one that commanded the sun to rise in the morning and set in the evening. He was the one that compelled the moon to keep Israel company throughout the night. He's the one that ensured that the blood coursed warmly through their bodies during the long hours of the night. He was their sword and shield. He was their protection and provision. He was their keeper and enabler. Everything that Israel Israel was up until that point was a direct result and product of Yahweh's love, grace, and mercy. The only thing Israel could see instead was what it didn't have. And like a moth drawn to a flame, Israel was insistent that it had to have a human king. This was Israel's mindset, and to be honest, it was childish and immature. People thought that only those things that someone else owned possessed value. If no one wanted what Israel had, then what it had wasn't worth having. The problem with this kind of thinking is that Israel didn't realize or appreciate that its king was priceless and invaluable. Not that we can put a price or value upon God, but for for purposes of this devotional, we understand our Heavenly Father's value and worth as we understand the value and worth of a Picasso painting or or Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa or a Fabergé egg. God, our Heavenly Father, is priceless and valuable and irreplaceable. Give us a king. Give us a ruler like the kind our neighbors have. Give us a king, Samuel. What I find very interesting is the Lord's response after Israel made his request for a king. Our God didn't trip. He didn't lose control. He didn't show out. Instead, the Lord kept his cool and processed their collective requests rationally and reasonably. Once Israel made its request, our Heavenly Father directed Samuel to go to the people and to warn them about the dangers of being ruled by a human king rather than continuing to live under his sovereign rule as their king. Samuel warned the people that a human king would be like a thief to to them. He would rob them of their land and of the produce from their land. This king would steal away their sons and daughters and force them to serve him as his slaves. This king would impose upon them high taxes and ridiculous costs. Life would become hard and unbearable under a human king. But in spite of this dire warning, the Israelites remained steadfast and resolute. Their demand did not change. Their insistence for a human king persevered. This is where the Lord shares with us the first point of our devotional this morning. One of the biggest challenges, if not the biggest challenge of them all, to establishing and maintaining faith is the pressure that this world places upon Christians to be more like it, the world, than to be what God has called us to be. Let me say it again. The first point of our devotional is one of the biggest challenges, 
if not the biggest challenge of them all to establishing and maintaining faith is the pressure that this world places upon Christians to be more like it, the world, than to be what God has called us to be. I will not lie to us. The world has placed a full court press on Christians. It has made it it, it is made as its obligation the task of testing us to see if we are exactly who we say we are. Whatever are those proclivities that nibble at the edges of our individual wills, those are the very temptations that the world aims squarely at us. This world hounds and dulls us with insatiable desires. It bombards us with the mess with message after message that the only way that any of us will possess any real value or worth is if we possess that which the world tells us that we should possess. We won't be attractive. We won't be fly. We won't possess swag unless we purchase this particular material item at an outrageous price. We won't move to the next level unless we're part of this group or are associated with this particular uh, uh, collect, collect, collective of people or association of people. We won't ever be complete and whole as individual as we are. Instead, we have to assimilate according to some predefined external image in order to be, be all that we can be. You see, it was no different for Israel. They saw what having a human king did for his neighbors. They saw the glitter, glam, and fame that these human kings enjoyed. They saw how the people responded to their human kings. They saw all of this and felt that they were missing something simply because they didn't also have a human king, nor did they celebrate their king like their neighbors did. You know, ironically, it's this very desire for a human king that led, some, led to some of the worst suffering that Israel ever experienced. Many of the kings that ruled over the northern kingdom of Samaria and the southern kingdom of Judah were the biggest scoundrels and con men this side of hell. They inflicted hurt harm and injury upon the collective nation of Israel to such a degree that Israel was forced to deal with such hurt, harm, and injury thousands of years later. This truth leads to our second point this morning. We don't realize that in our overzealous effort to be more like the outside world, we fail to completely understand all of the dangers inherent in playing the roles that the world wants us to play. We'll repeat that point again. We don't realize that in our overzealous effort to be more like the outside world, we fail to completely understand all of the dangers inherent in playing the roles that the world wants us to play. All Israel could see was having a human king like his neighbors. The problem was that they couldn't see past their expressed desire. They couldn't see that a human king was a thief and a, an abuser. He was going to do more harm to them than good. You know, we suffer from the same short-sightedness. We're so determined to have what the world declares we should have that we never stop to ask ourselves and one another, just because the world says I'm supposed to have this, does that mean that actually owning and possessing it will bless me? Could the attainment and fulfillment of this immediate desire actually hurt me? And if it will hurt me, why didn't the world warn me of this concealed danger? You know, there are some of us that are so determined to reach that professional milestone that the world declares we must have, we must reach, that we don't realize just how much we sacrifice our families and the love they have for us. There are some of us 
that are so focused on ensuring that we have enough materially and economically so that we're never in a position of lacking anything that we never realize that the fulfillment, that the greatest aspect of life, the biggest fulfillment in life is never accomplished through the acclamation of things, but through the relationships that we share. There are some some of us that are so determined to find that special person that we sacrifice ourselves. We sacrifice who we are in the process. At what point does the attainment of love require us to completely lose ourselves and forfeit who we are? You see, there's a cost to everything more so for those things of the world. It's therefore imperative that we fully learn and completely understand what those costs are before we pursue the fulfillment of the desires that the world sets before us. Israel was determined to acquire for itself a human king, seeing that he couldn't dissuade them from this desire, from this desire, the Lord acquiesced. He acceded to their collective request. He gave Samuel permission to give Israel a king. And unfortunately for Israel, this is where the trouble began. This is also where the Lord drops the third point of our devotional this morning. We must always be careful of what we ask for from the Lord because he just may give us exactly what we ask for. We must be careful of what we ask for from the Lord because he just may give us exactly what what we ask for. Israel asked for a king and the first king that the Lord appointed was Saul. While Saul looked like a king, the brother was actually a coward. He was a boy trying to walk in the footsteps of a man. His thinking was that of a child. He was immature, selfish, self-centered, and self-absorbed. He put his self-interest before the express interests of God. And when it came time to account for his shortcomings, Saul lied again and again. Obedience to the Lord God Almighty was just something that Saul could never do or never be. I know that there's something we've been begging the Lord for. We've been harassing God for years for that one thing, for that one person, for that one opportunity, for that one chance. We've told the Lord that we would give anything just to have it, him, her, that. What we didn't count on was our Heavenly Father's willingness to give give us what we want so that we could realize that what we need is greater than what we ever could want. And what we need is Him. Yes, we've convinced ourselves that attaining the desires of our heart is a good thing. And I honestly pray that it is. But I cannot help but think that in many situations in our lives, we haven't fully considered all the ramifications of possessing the the desires of our hearts. There is a cost we must pay for acquiring these desires. There is something about us that is sacrificed while attaining these desires. And if there's anything worth praising the Lord for, it has to be that he not only forgives us for wanting that thing or those things more than we want him, but he also graciously and mercifully restores to us that which we foolishly lost just to realize, just to possess and a a desire. Eventually, Yahweh would give Israel a king that would eternally rule them with kindness, love, grace, and mercy. But Israel would have to wait 40 and two generations for that king to be revealed. The irony is that again, Israel couldn't recognize who this king actually was and outright rejected him. The question for us this morning is, will we make the same mistake or will we make the right decision? Will we go further than our spiritual ancestors? Only we can answer these questions. Let's pray that we answer them correctly. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Everyone, we just received our devotional. We're getting ready to have our morning prayer over our devotional before we move into prayer session or our call. Good morning, Sister Angela. We see you on Facebook Live. We're so happy that you can join us this morning. Here, let's do this. Let's have a word of prayer over our devotional uh, uh, that God would uh, speak to us, that God would confirm some things to us, that God would help us realize um, that uh, sometimes the desires that we're asking for, sometimes the desires that we have to uh, be more like the world or more in line with the more world or to be able to reach those levels of success or those levels of of identity or those levels of existence that the world has said uh, we need to reach are not always good for us and that many times they lead to our hurt, harm, injury. They lead to our demise and our destruction. And we want God to help us discern the, uh, the, the differences between uh, that which he requires from us and that which the world is trying to put upon us. Here, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now. Thank you for this day. For this, this is the day that you have made, God. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. God, we pray at this moment that, God, you will forever love us and love us in terms of helping us to understand that our requirement as Christians is to remain connected to you. And by being connected to you, to live according to the standards, according to, according to the requirements and the obligations and the expectations that you have for us, that God, you are requiring us right this very instant to be uh, leaders, to be servant leaders, to be way makers, to be examples, to be models, to be uh, 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 living uh, uh, proof that God, you are good, you are faithful, and that your grace and mercy is real, and it follows, follows us every step of our lives, every day of our lives. God, we pray that God, you allow us to build up some resistance to what the world says that we must have, that we will build up some resistance to the world's poking and prodding and constantly inciting us and pulling us to live by its rules, to live by its standards, to live by its expectations, that God, you will give us the courage and the fortitude to be able to say, no, for God, I live and for God, I will die. And that and that my God is the one thing, uh, the one source of direction, the one source of inspiration, the one source of inspiration instruction, the one source of expectation for my life and that world I will not give in. I will not turn myself over to you. I will not accept what you're trying to force upon me because what you're trying to force upon me is much less than what God has in store for me. God, we pray at this moment that God, you would do that for all of us. It doesn't matter if God, we've been walking in faith for a hundred years or a hundred seconds. God, do that for us all so that God, we may serve you here in your earthly kingdom as God, you're, you're served in your heavenly kingdom. God, we ask right now that as we transition from the devotional of our call this morning to the prayer section of our call this morning, that God, you will empathize us and sympathize us so that God, when your people raise their prayer requests, their praise reports, their prayers, their words of encouragement, their testimonies and their witnesses, that God, you will enable us to deliver the prayers that God, you require. You will enable us, God, to speak the encouragement that you require, that God, you let your people leave this call edified, encouraged, empowered and prepared and equipped to tackle the challenges that lay before them on this day and in this world. Now, God, we bless your name from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, uh, praise God. Uh, 
uh, it is time now for us to transition to the prayer section of our call. It's time for us to transition to that part of our call where we receive from you your prayer requests, your praise reports, your prayers, your words of encouragement, your testimonies, and your witnesses. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter uh, uh, if you think what you're dealing with is big or small. If it's on your heart, okay, if it is something that is troubling you, if it's something that's bothering you, if it's something that has you concerned or worried, we want you to take advantage of this call and to uh, place your uh, prayer request, your prayer, rec your praise report, your words of encouragement, your witness and testimony on our virtual altar. The word says, where two or more are gathered, there shall also uh, Jesus be. Amen. There shall also God be. Amen. And so here's the thing. God, God, you got your prerequisite two or three. I'm here. You're here. You've heard me mention names of other prayer warriors who are on the call with us right now. You've got your prerequisite two or three. The word of God is such that it never fails and it never returns to him void. So because we're here in prayer, seeking God's direction, seeking God's uh, provision, seeking God's uh, uh, intercession in our lives. Why don't you take advantage of that? Share with us what it is that you want us to pray with you for and allow us to pray for you. Amen. Amen. So let's do this. Let's open up the floor. If you have a prayer request, praise report, prayer, words of encouragement, testimony, or witness that you would like to share, why don't you jump in, give us your name, where you call in front, and we'll go from there. If you're on Facebook Live or Periscope Live, and you have a, pra a prayer, a praise report, and all those things we've listed, you also can share your praise report and your prayer request. Simply type in, in the box at the bottom uh, uh, of the screen, uh, what it is you want us to pray with you or for you about, and we uh, will lift it up in prayer. So here, let's get started. Let's jump in. Let's receive our prayer requests, our praise reports, our words of encouragement, our witnesses, and our testimonies. Good morning, family. It's Nancy from Jersey. Good We're giving honor to God and thankful for another day. Amen. That all of you are here with us. Amen. So, um, Brother Al, 